I would also like to uh, introduce, uh, to, to finish this off, uh, Councillor Josh Matlow. Thank you. Um, when, I, when I heard about the results of the survey, I was deeply disturbed and concerned. They also support what I've been hearing directly from people who work in the city's long-term care homes. Uh, this is a matter of respect, it's a matter of health and safety, and it's a matter of providing the right kind of care for both those who work for us, but also for the people who we love, who we're expecting that the city can provide the right kind of care for. Our parents, our loved ones who, uh, who live in our long-term care facilities, our homes. So currently the city's long-term care homes have low staffing levels that mean that care is provided at a one to 12 ratio during the day. At night, this ratio can go to one to 40. So imagine one PSW, or one staff member, responding to the needs of 40 people. Imagine your loved one in that situation, whether they be living there or working to care for the people who live there. So QB Local 79 conducted a survey and found that 87% of PSWs and 77% of registered practical nurses responded stating that they have experienced physical violence from residents or family members. I've been advocating for a culture change in the city's 10 long-term care homes. We have a culture today that doesn't allow our homes to be homes. They are institutions and they are facilities. Not the kind of place that you would want your own loved one to end up in, or yourself. We have a society that are already in Toronto today. Uh, for the first time in history, there are more people over 65 than under 15. And that's supposed to double in the next 20 years. In fact, one in five of us are going to be a senior over the next 20 years. So transforming the quality of care means changing the culture emphasizing the holistic aspects of the resident's quality of life and attention to the individual's interests. In fact, emotion-based, emotion-focused programs, whether it be butterfly or other types of approaches, are known to transform the resident's life, especially if they have dementia. It actually cares for that individual as a partner in their own care rather than just a patient. And we've seen the level of antipsychotic drugs go down weight loss go down, the quality of life both for that individual who we love who's, who's living there, but also for those who we entrust to provide the care and support to our loved ones. So we want to provide that kind of care, but the, with the ratio, the, the, the ratio that's out of whack with the reality of caring for those individuals needs to be addressed. I, I've toured many of the homes throughout our city uh, recently, I went to one in Etobicoke called Westburn Manor, and that is one of the best examples that I've seen of one that has, on their own, adopted an emotion-focused initiative. They've painted the walls. They've created a more home-like environment. They have, um, they have dolls and these robotic dogs, and they, they, they're creative. They really try to make it into a place that people can feel proud of and feel accepted in and respected in. But the one thing that they kept telling me every time I asked them candidly, do you have what you need to be successful? They would pull me aside quietly to the end of the hallway and say, counselor, we don't have enough workers here. They're stressed, they're feeling pressure, they need support. I've heard from senior managers at City Hall, who when I go to them and I ask them, why aren't we providing the support that we know we need in our long-term care facilities? The, the kind of support that we hear from those on the ground asking for. They tell me it's our job to present a balanced budget to City Council. Well, I, I respectfully disagree. Council's decision is about providing a balanced budget. Our staff's job is to provide us with the most honest, candid, objective, and best recommendations to provide the care that the people who we are entrusted with who live in our long-term care homes should be provided with. So we're now hearing that our PSWs and nurses and other staff are victims of abuse. That's unacceptable. 
no workplace, anywhere, in any context, should allow for that. And any employer that allows for that willingly is being neglectful. In any context, anywhere. And I conclude by asking each of you to think about, what if this was your mom and dad, or uncle or aunt, or brother or sister, or dear friend, who's living in one of these homes? Wouldn't you want them to be safe and respected and get the individual emotion-focused care that they deserve like you would want to have one day? Now imagine it's one of your loved ones working there. Would you accept them being emotionally or physically abused even one day, never mind so many days each year? This has to end. It's unacceptable. It's fundamentally wrong. And we'll be asking council to make improvements both to the ratio and to the kind of care that's provided in our long-term care homes. Thank you very much, and thank you, QP, for initiating this and bringing this important information to light. Thank you.